Number 92. Explain how to choose the appropriate acid base indicator for the titration of a weak base with a strong acid. Okay, so this one's going to kind of be a little theoretical question with a theoretical answer, so no math involved. But the first thing is, I just want to show you that there are tons of acid base indicators. And I don't know how many are here, right? There's a couple of probably uh, common ones that you've seen in your lab class. Uh, methyl orange, bromyl, uh, bromophenol blue, right? Usually you'll see the phenolphthalein if you're doing like acid-base titration. But there are a lot, and they change colors depending on the certain pH of the system. And that's why, you know, some acid base indicators are better than others because if you need to see what's going on around pH of, let's say, 6, you wouldn't choose an indicator that is not changing colors anywhere near pH of 6. So these basically are just showing you what's happening at certain pH values. Now, in order to find out what's going on with the weak base versus a strong acid, we probably should draw a little graph. So here's my axis, right? And generally, if you're doing a titration, pH is going to be the y-axis, and then your milliliters, how much strong acid you're adding, is uh, on the x-axis. So we'll say milliliters, and it's specifically the addition of the strong acid. So as we're going along, we're adding more and more and more of the strong acid to the mix. And then let's just say that this is, I don't know, we'll go up by twos. So this is a pH of zero, then we'll say pH of two, pH of four, six, etc. right? Eight, uh, not a uh, 10 and then 12. Okay, cool. So basically if you're titrating, we're starting off with only a weak base. And since it's basic, it's obviously basic, it has to be a pH of greater than seven. So usually when you're starting off with the weak base, you will start high. So let's just say, I don't know, somewhere around here. So you'll always start high. And as you're adding more and more and more strong acid, the resulting pH is going to be much lower. Because if you're adding strong acid at some point, the strong acid is going to predominate and you're not going to have any of your weak base left. So we're going to be probably ending up over here. But the thing is, is that it's not a linear uh, line here. What happens is that as you add a little bit of strong acid, your pH of the weak base isn't really going to change because you're going to form a buffer solution. And remember, if you have a buffer the pH value is not really going to change. So for a while, the pH of the weak uh, base should probably be very, very, very similar. It's going to probably dip a little bit, but nothing to hurt the system. But then there's going to come a point in time where once you add one milliliter over, you know, the buffer solution, that's when things start to happen. And what's going to happen is they're going to, there's going to be a sudden drop, basically in the pH. And this is when now basically you have like no more base left and you're now just converting all of your weak base into the conjugate weak acid. So it's basically like that. And then after a while, it will kind of settle out because once you just have predominantly strong acid, the pH isn't really going to be anything, you know, anything changing. So basically, you'll see something like this, that drop, and then it'll kind of like, that's pretty good. Now, in order to pick the appropriate acid base indicator, we always want to pick it around the equivalence point. And the equivalence point is always right in the middle of that strong drop. So let's just guesstimate here, right? We're not really doing any math. Here looks like the strong drop. So right in the middle of that strong drop, maybe I'll just put that here. This is your equivalence point. And 
And this is basically when your weak conjugate acid is going to start predominating over the base. And that's when you can see the change in your buffer solution. So generally speaking, a weak base, if you're starting off with a weak base, the acid base indicator that you want to choose is going to be roughly acidic. It's not going to be basic. So if I go on my scale of things and search for a pH that's maybe roughly around five or something, where there's a change in color around five, you'll see that you could use, you know, methyl red. Uh, you could basically use maybe the tail end of methyl orange. If we, you know, if we said that the, the middle was somewhere below here, this is just a general recommendation, right? You would be closer to four and you would choose methyl orange. But the idea is that you would choose a, uh, we'll say a pH indicator that's acidic. So acid base indicator, the pH indicator, whichever one you want to call it, acid base indicator should be picked um, that matches the pH of the equivalence point. I'll just put EQ point. So in this case, maybe we'll pick the methyl, whatever we said, the methyl red, because there is a, a slight change in color from like an orange to a yellow. Okay? So hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and I will see you in the next question. All right. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.